Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop on YouTube. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to show you how to get flash on clash with your lightsaber using a power extender and a Nano Biscotti version 2 sound card. Now these two pieces of electronics work really well together, and they may look intimidating at first, but I think after today's video you're going to find that it's a lot easier than you thought. So for today we're going to need a soldering iron. This is an electrostatic safe or ESD safe soldering iron, which is ideal, but you can get a less expensive soldering iron for 20 or 30 bucks. That's going to do the job. Of course, you're going to need solder. Um, I use these helping hands. They're really cheap and really invaluable. It is possible to do it without these, but these are really helpful. I use a little hobby vise. You can also get away with a, some kind of a clamp, just something to hold down your electronics while you're working on them. Uh, of course, you're going to need some kind of wire snips. I prefer this style. Lots of different styles. Um, a little thing that I'm going to use today is just a, a two battery pack. Two AAA, you can use two AA. Uh, I've got a couple of alligator clips on mine. You could use just the wires off of yours. Um, but three volts is going to be what we want just for, for some testing. Of course, you're going to need eye protection because when working with solder, you never want it to spring back into your face or into your eye. That would be not good. And uh, this shrink tube, this is, uh, this is 1 16th. I think you could also use 1 8 inch shrink tube. Again, all the parts that we use today are going to be listed in the description of this video so you could mirror exactly what I'm doing today or you can sub in your own preference of parts. Uh, but I think that's all that we need to start so let's get going. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, step one, is we're going to remove all these things that we're not going to use right now uh, out of the picture and we are just going to focus on uh, the LED and the uh, the optic holder. We're going to wire up this LED so that we can use it with flash on clash. Here's a little tip that you can use to determine which dice is which on your LED if you're unsure, if you've got several lying around. I've got a little battery pack here with a couple of AAAs in there. 1.5 volt each, that makes the uh, pack 3 volts. And I use a little resistor here if I'm using, if I'm testing red uh, LEDs because sometimes they don't like 3 volts, they want closer to 2, so the resistor makes it closer to 2. But for this LED, which is blue, blue, white, uh, I'm just going to use the straight voltage. So um, I pick one die, positive, negative, no, oh, I can see that's white. I switch it over. Now it's pretty easy to tell one of these LEDs is not like the other two. So the two that are alike are both blue, the one that's not alike is white. This is, of course, a uh, Tri-Rebel. The Tri-Cree is generally brighter, especially the new ones, the XBE2s, but the wiring is going to be the same. So I'm going to use this one for our experiment today. I just wanted to show you how you do that. So I've got a, a number of little wires that I've cut here um, because what I'm going to do is the, the white LED is going to be its own circuit. That's what we need flash on clash and the power extender for. The, uh, the two blue LEDs, I'm going to wire them in parallel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach short wires. These are just two-inch wires. And I'm going to strip just a tiny little bit and twist. That's going to attach there. And then I want to strip a larger amount, about a you know, quarter of an inch, like that, and twist. Um, because we're going to twist these together a little bit later. Now I've got my LED here in a, a little hobby vise that I like to use for this type of thing. If you don't have a hobby vise, you can use a a wood clamp. I would caution against using a, a heavy bench vise because you might crush the LED. The, the PCB backing is a soft metal. Um, I'm just going to show you how I quickly attach these wires. I'm just going to tin this wire, a little bit of solder. It tins that wire. You can see the pads are already tinned. The red, I'm going to go to the positive pad. And I'm going to align that perfectly. A little bit of solder, check, and that's a good joint. I've got my wire um, routed so that it'll drop through that, that slot right there. I'm going to do the rest of them really quickly. Now as you can see I've got my wires attached. Now I, I use purple and yellow for the flash on clash, the white dye. Yellow is positive, purple is neg negative. You can do whatever color coding you like. Um, that's just how I do it. So now I've got my purple and, and yellow wires. Those are longer. Those are going to go to my circuit board. And then these ones uh, are going to twist together, and I'll put a resistor on there. But before I do, just to keep things nice and protected, I want to mention too, before I put the heat, uh, the LED on there, I put a piece of thermal tape, the hex thermal tape you can buy in the store. I'll link to that in the description. And that electrically isolates the, uh, the LED. And you can see that the wires go through those holes. I'm going to quickly just drop the, uh, the optic 
in those little holes like that. And then I'm going to thread on the top. This will keep the unit nice and safe while we're working on it. And it's going to be all together and ready to go. So now what I want to do is I want to twist these wires together, red to red, black to black. That's why I stripped about a quarter of an inch away so that I can uh, line those up like this. And then I just twist those together. And uh, what I'm going to do is once they're twisted together, is I'm going to put them in the hands of my uh, helping hands like this. And uh, then I'm just going to apply a little bit of solder and these will then stay together. I'm going to show you another trick that I like to use. So once I've soldered them, these wires are warm. So if I twist them while they're warm, they will stay twisted together and not spring back. I just hold them for a second while they cool. You may want to make sure that they, the wires still run in their channels. But uh, that's the red one. I'm going to do the black one up just like that. Okay, I've got my red pair twisted and my black pair twisted. So now the blue dice in here are in parallel. And I'm going to attach this 0.5 ohm, or half an ohm resistor to this. Yours, yours may look a little different than mine. This is a 3 watt 0.5 ohm resistor that I commonly use for these kind of builds. And I'm going to attach this. Before I do, I'm going to use this 1 16th inch heat shrink tubing that I've just cut a, about a half an inch little slice of. I'm going to slide that down there. You may want to go up to the 1 inch, 1 8 inch size if your wires are a little bit bigger than mine, but this works perfectly for this 28 gauge wire. You're probably using 26 gauge wire, in which case you'll want to use a 1 8 inch for that, and I'm going to use my helping hands to line these guys up. As you can see, I've got uh, heat shrink on both sides of the resistor. I've also got the black wires attached to a single black wire. Now, with this, I'm going to get the wire out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. With this heat shrink, um, it's of good quality. So before shrinking it up with a heat gun, I can, if I want to keep it in place, I can just rub my soldering iron on there, and it starts to shrink up. Now you notice the resistor is on the red wire. It doesn't have to be on the red wire in a circuit like this. Your resistor can be on the black wire, which will be negative. I just tend to favor putting it on the positive lead. Um, so I'm going to shrink this up and then I will be able to move on to the next step. So now my resistor is on and uh, my black wires are twisted, my red wires are twisted. So now I have them all twisted together and I have a red and a black wire for my main LED, two blues, and a purple and yellow wire, which is the positive and negative for my white flash on clash. And that is the LED. So now we're ready to move that aside and ready to get on to the nano biscotti and the power extender. So if, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the SD card out of my nano biscotti. I don't want to wire it up and do any soldering on it with the, uh, the SD card in there, just as a best practice. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wire up the power extender. And right away, you might notice that yours will look a little different than this one here. This is an older one that I've pulled out uh, of an old saber that I'm, I'm going to work with. Um, yours will have a couple of pads here for a uh, resistor. Right there and right there. And these two posts won't be joined. You can see on this power extender, they're, they're joined. They're actually linked. Um, this is where you would put a, a small SMD resistor if you wanted to use it, but because we are using a power extender with a single 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, I am not going to use a resistor on my flash on clash circuit. Uh, because the white LED can handle the 3.7 or fully charged, they can go up to 4.2 volts, these batteries. So I'm not going to be using a resistor. So this one is actually advantageous for me that these are these are joined. But I'm going to pretend that they're not. I'm going to pretend that this this power extender is exactly like yours and I'll show you how to wire it up. So what I'm going to do first is take my yellow and purple wire and those are going to go on to where the, uh, where the LED goes. So I'm going to wire those up and then I'll show you the rest. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my purple and yellow wires attached to my LED. Um, again, I want to mention that uh, these wire lengths are just for a bench test. I'm just going to assemble this and show you how it works. So the wire lengths that you're going to need for your saber are going to depend on where your components are in your saber, how they go together, how easy it is to get access to them or to install them. You may want to insta install uh, quick disconnects between the wires so you can unplug certain things. Um, this is just a bench test. 
I'm going to use red and white wires for my positive and negative because those are the same colors I'll be using on my board and they're actually going to link to my board. And I'm going to be using this, this orange wire here to connect to the flash on clash circuit on the, the nano biscotti. And of course, if you've uh, done what I recommended and you've printed off uh, a nice board overview or a piece from the, the notes or from the manual, then you'll know, uh, you'll know which is which. You can see where these different things go together and that flash on clash pod. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but everything's nicely laid out for you in the manual. But I want to show you, instead of attaching my, my red wire here and then running a jumper of some kind or a piece of wire to bridge that across, um, I'm just going to actually attach it right to the same spot as the uh, the yellow positive wire is. So it runs straight through, which is what which is what I want to do. So if I'm careful, I probably should have put both of these wires in my helping hands so that the yellow one didn't come off, but it's a good solder joint. So my red now joins on the pecs all the way through to the yellow. My circuit returns on the purple wire and then these are going to get connected to my Nano Biscotti soundboard, which is what we'll do next. So I wanted you to see the circuit coming together. So I've got my power extender here and these are the, these are the wires that are going to go to the board. I'm also going to need to attach my battery. Now my battery has got this nice JST clip, so I'm going to show you a little testing trick that I like to use. But before we get to that, I've got these little bits of wire. These are going to go to my battery. And what I want to remember is that there's only a limited number of spots to solder to on the board. So essentially all my positives will be going together. So I'm going to take this red wire, and I'm going to link it with this red wire, and I'm going to link it with this red wire. And you notice I've stripped about a quarter of an inch on each of them. So I'm going to twist these all together. And these are all going to go to the same positive terminal on the board. All right, as you might be able to see, I've got my three red wires, one that goes to the power extender, and the one that goes to the LED, and then this third one, which is just, right for now, just dangling out there, short one. And I've got, uh, the two white wires, the one going to the power extender, and this short dangly part. I've got my orange wire, which is my flash on clash control wire, and I've got the negative wire from the LED. And these are all going to go to specific spots on the board. For this, uh, obviously you want to read your manual and know exactly where the spots are. I'm going to solder them up really quickly, and then I'll show you uh, how, to, how we're going to finish this up. Okay, so I've got these wires attached. The uh, red is to the positive battery positive, LED positive, everything positive. Uh, the white is the battery negative, and uh, the black is the LED negative, the main one, the blues. And then the orange wire is the flash on clash control. So I only have to wire up the speaker and the switch, but I realized that the switch needs to share this negative post. So I really should have twisted it, one of the switch wires together with this white wire before I attach them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully remove this pair of wires and I'm gonna twist together one line on that for the switch before I reattach it and then we will proceed. Here's another little trick that might help you if you find that uh, you're new to soldering or that this is intimidating to you and these these spots get all bunched together um, you can flip the board over. You'll notice that the, uh, the negative wires that I've reattached now with one of the switch legs in it the switch is just going to this basic momentary switch here. The one gray wire needed to go on the negative and it was getting pretty crowded over here so rather than try to solder in between all these wires to get that negative in there, um, I just used the uh, corresponding pad on the other side of the board. I've also used the corresponding bonding pad on the other side of the board for the other switch leg. Um, and then the last two are, are the speaker wires. So it's all wired up, and as you can see on those two little legs that I had left over here, I attached uh, a little clip, and that's gonna go, that's gonna go on my battery so that I could plug the battery in and out really easy. That, on your saver, that might go to a recharge port, um, or you might have your battery wired in there directly, um, but that's how I'm going to do it just for this bench test today. Okay, I think we're ready for a test. We've got everything wired up, um, and you've seen how we've wired it all the way along. Uh, so it's time to plug in the battery. Now I've reinserted the SD card in here. You'll be able to see that there. Um, and it's just got the stock fonts on there. Now the speaker's not going to sound very good because it's not in, in, in any kind of enclosure. Um, but just for a bench test, this will work. Now, when I plug in the battery, I always, always, always want to make sure that I do not reverse the battery polarity. Red to red, 
black to black, or in this case black to white, but red to red is the important one. And I want to triple check that it's red is positive, just like it's supposed to be. So when I clip this in, like that, it's not going to burn anything out on me. Always be careful with that. You plug it in, you hear a boot up sound, we're ready to test. So I hit my activation button, and I get what in, is a bright blue blade, very blue, both dies are in operation there. Um, it may look purple on camera, it's so high intensity. I'm going to hit activate a clash. Oh, you can see when the clash is activated, then that engages through the, the power extender, engages that white dice. Now that's just the stock setting. If it was up to me, I would probably reduce the time on that flash on clash. You could go into the, the uh, config file and you could reduce the flash on clash time so it's more of a staccato pulse, which I tend to prefer. Um, but that's the beauty of Plector Labs Electronics is you can, you can tune it any way that you want. So our circuit works. That's how it's going to look. Um, I will give you a couple of pointers in terms of getting this all in your saber. As I mentioned before, these wire lengths uh, are cut just for a bench test. This is not how it would look inside of your saber. Obviously, you need different lengths of wires and different places for quick disconnects. Um, but to, uh, to install this in your saber, you want to make sure that your uh, power extender it has got metal bits on it. Your nano biscotti has got metal bits on it. They don't, they don't need to be touching the, the inside body of your saber. Um, now, Custom Saber Shop has these amazing chassis discs. These are the ones for uh, an 18500 or 18650 battery like this. And they've got a cutout for the Nano Biscotti. Um, if you want to watch a video that goes into more detail about how these chassis discs work together, you can just click here and I'll include a link to a, uh, a video that I did showing some of the other applications of the chassis discs. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, you just want to slide your nano biscotti in here. Fits rather tight. Maybe you want another chassis disc on the other end of your nano biscotti like that. Now it's possible to use the holes to run the wires. You don't need to use the holes to to have rods. You can hot glue that power extender onto your battery in a place that's going to clear. Um, you could hot glue it onto the end of their battery away from the metal. Um, hot glue is a great tool for this. Uh, I wouldn't wrap it in electrical tape and let it bounce around in there. That's just not a really good way of doing it. It probably would work. It wouldn't be as durable. There's lots of different ways to secure it. You just need to find the one that's the best for your Sabre. And that will work the best for you. So that's how easy it is to install Flash on Clash in your lightsaber using Plector Labs Electronics. The Nano Biscotti version 2 sound card and the power extender board. These two things in conjunction together are going to deliver a really impressive effect for not a lot of money. So again, thanks for watching.